Banging noises have been heard while searching for the missing deep sea craft close to the Titanic disaster, but the explorers' pals fear that we're losing the opportunity to find them alive since their oxygen supply is running low. The Titan submarine, which was traveling to a shipwreck off the coast of Canada on Sunday, lost contact with tour operators while it was about 435 miles south of St. John's, Newfoundland. The U.S. Coast Guard calculated on Tuesday that the 22-foot-long Ocean Gate Expedition's vessel Titan, which is occupied by five individuals, including British millionaire explorer Hamish Harding, had just 40 hours of oxygen left. Despite the flicker of optimism, Mr. Harding's close friend Janet McKelson pleaded heartbreakingly this morning that we are losing time, we're losing the opportunity to find them alive. I'm nervous, she said to the BBC. I'm so nervous that I'm physically ill. I'm worried and afraid. I'm not now sleeping. All I want is some positive news. Every every second and minute seems to go for hours. She also discussed her most recent chat with the British adventurer, which they had just prior to his Sunday dive. Hamish and I last spoke just before his dive. He just stated that he was waiting for the ideal weather window and that he was on his way to the Titanic. Godspeed, Hamish, I said in an equally casual manner, Ms. Mikkelsen continued. Shahzada Dawood, his 19-year-old son Sulman, founder and CEO of Ocean Gate Stockton Rush, and French submersible pilot Paul Henry Nargillet are the other passengers. At intervals of 30 minutes, a Canadian aircraft detected sounds in the region where the capsule disappeared. It was unclear when the pounding was heard, but it was mentioned in correspondence between parties and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security that were viewed by Rolling Stone. Officials from the Coast Guard acknowledged that an aircraft had heard underwater noises, and they located efforts to find the source. They had yielded negative results as of early Wednesday. The data will be further examined by the rescue teams, and because the submersible launched on Sunday and rapidly lost communication with the surface, it may be taken into account for upcoming search operations in the deep Atlantic Ocean. There is reason for hope, the Explorers Club president Richard Garriott DKU stated in a social media message on Tuesday night. In a statement, he said, Based on data from the field, we understand that likely signs of life have been detected at the site. We have much greater confidence that one there is cause for hope. According to reports, those trapped in the submarine include billionaire Hamish Harding, French explorer Paul Henry Nargillet, Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush, Shahzada Dawood, 48, UK based member of the Prince's Trust Charity Board, and his son Suleiman Dawood, 19. RCC Halifax dispatched a P-8, Poseidon, which has underwater detecting capabilities from the air. The DHS letter stated, reported a contact in a location near to the distress position. Every 30 minutes, the P-8 could hear pounding noises in the neighborhood. Additional sonar was deployed for hours later, and thumping could still be heard. The document doesn't specify the reason or date of the hammering. The Explorers Club, according to Garriott DKU, are confident in the U.S. Coast Guard and believe they are doing everything possible with all of the resources they have. The U.S. Coast Guard precisely understand the experienced personnel and tech we can deeply, he continued. Harding, one of the five men on board, is a founding member of the Explorers Club's Board of Trustees. The organization claimed to have direct access to the White House, the Coast Guard, the Air Force, and Congress. The Joint Rescue Coordination Center is attempting to locate an underwater remote-operated vehicle through partner organizations to possibly help, according to a DHS notice. The Titan, an Ocean Gate submersible that went missing after losing communication with the mothership during its descent to the shipwreck on Sunday morning, is still being searched extensively. It could be stuck, according to Rear Admiral John Mogger, who is assisting in organizing the search. On Tuesday, Mogger stated, We don't have equipment on site that can do a survey of the bottom. It will be challenging to find it because there is a lot of rubbish. We're concentrating on attempting to find it right now. The bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, according to Royal Navy Rear Admiral Chris Perry, is as black as being in space, and there is also a lot of muck and other debris being carried up. With searchlights, you can only see approximately 20 feet in front of you. 
You are being propelled by incredibly powerful ocean currents. The five occupants of the mini sub would be in complete darkness in a temperature of about 3 coulombs 37 farads while the tragic vessel rolled over the seabed in the event that the power went out. There would also be no functioning propellers, lights, or heating. Where is it? said oceanographer and Titanic authority David Gallo. Is it submerged, floating, or in the middle of the water? That is something that is still up in the air. The depth of the water exceeds two kilometers. It's like traveling to another world. It is chilly, gloomy, and under high pressure. The main issue is that the Titan submarine no longer transmits signals, making it very hard to find. The last sonar ping it was scheduled to send to mothership Polar Prince was at 9. 45 m on Sunday, an hour and 45 minutes into the dive when it was floating directly over the Titanic radar and GPS are not functional underwater. The Titanic tour provider Ocean Gate Expeditions called the Coast Guard on Sunday, but for some reason it took eight hours. At 5.40 p.m., it was reported to the U.S. Coast Guard, and at 9.13 p.m., it was warned to the Canadian Coast Guard. The vessel's estimated oxygen supply is good for 96 hours, giving search and rescue crews till Thursday am to locate the vessel. Ocean Gate, who began diving to the Titanic in 2021, is under scrutiny after it was discovered the Titan had electrical damage and had to be repaired since it was unable to survive the water before it sank, while families wait in agony for news. According to information published by the Daily Mail, Calm yesterday, the tourist firm in charge of the missing submersible also hesitated eight hours to notify the Coast Guard after it lost communication an hour and 45 minutes into its descent on Sunday. A fleet of U.S. and Canadian rescue ships and planes, as well as an increasing number of private vessels, had arrived at the location by yesterday. The U.S. Coast Guard's Captain Jamie Frederick made the following statement while speaking at the search center in Boston. Those search efforts have not produced any results. However, several commercial ships equipped with specialized underwater drones sent them down last night. The missing crew and their loved ones received Frederick's most sincere thoughts and prayers, and he assured them that they were doing everything possible. He did, however, acknowledge that the rescuers were in the dying stages. When questioned, even with that much time left, if you were to locate the submersible right now, would that give you enough time to save those five people on board? I don't know the answer to that question, he retorted. All I know is that we will exert every effort to arrange a rescue. Titan was one of the only ships in the world capable of reaching the Titanic debris, which is located at a height of 12,500 feet. Even nuclear submarines are unable to travel so deep safely. Deep-sea diving experts are working with Coast Guards on the unique and difficult mission, according to Frederick. He told reporters while standing dockside that getting salvage equipment on the spot was a key priority. The top professionals are present despite the huge machinery and complexity. The specialists will consider the best strategy for retrieving the sub if it is found. The five passengers can use the decompression chamber if they are transported to the surface. It has been revealed that a thrill seeker who had planned to accompany millionaire Hamish Harding on the missing Titanic submarine backed out of the dive because he believed Ocean Gate was cutting too many corners. The Sun claimed Tuesday night that Chris Brown, 61, paid the deposit for the fateful trip but then stated he changed his mind because he was unhappy with the ship's technology and construction materials. Using old scaffolding poles as ballast and having controls based on computer game-style controllers were two of his worries about Ocean Gate. Despite being one of the first people to sign up for this trip, he told the newspaper that he finally concluded the risks were too high. The Titan's five passengers, including Hamish, are presently missing, and Brown stated that he was really upset about Hamish. After having a few beers while on vacation at Sir Richard Branson's Necker Island, Brown and Harding decided to embark on the journey. He said that while the Titan was still being built, the couple paid the 10% down payment for the trip, whose cost has already more than quadrupled. Brown, though, said that he discovered Ocean Gate had missed crucial objectives while testing the submersible's depth in the years that followed. 
The multimillionaire digital marketing mogul was alarmed to see that the ship was being piloted by a PlayStation controller that had been modified. It is also believed that he was concerned about the technological difficulties and setbacks that occurred during the development process. I discovered they used old scaffolding poles for the sub's ballast, he told the Sun. You could definitely use used scaffold poles to make your own submarine. However, this was a commercial vessel. Brown finally sent an email to Ocean Gate asking for a refund since, according to him, risk is not something I shy away from. Despite saying that Harding is not the sort to panic, he is concerned for his pal. Keeping extremely calm, he thinks the billionaire is probably processing plans, schemes, and ideas through his enormous brain. Giving hope to the other passengers, according to Brown, is what Harding will be doing. Just weeks before the Titanic tourist submarine vanished, a U.S. Navy veteran warned of the terrifying health implications of being stranded in a submarine, Daily Mail, Com can report, DR. Dale Mole, the former director of undersea medicine and radiation health for the U.S. Navy, described the hostile environment on commercial submersibles in a paper that was published in a medical journal last month. Passengers were exposed to low oxygen levels, toxic carbon dioxide levels, and sub-freezing temperatures. Although most ships have restricted capacity, the Titan vessel, which is currently missing, will feature a carbon dioxide scrubber on board to eliminate extra hazardous gas that accumulates as passengers exhale in the small area. Carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere by a scrubbing mechanism, making the air safe to breathe. Tuesday, Mole told Daily Mail, Calm that if the passengers are not already dead due to a catastrophic rupture of the pressure vessel, it is very much a race against time to save them. Most people may think of oxygen when humans are enclosed in an airtight environment, but carbon dioxide is actually a larger danger, he continued, they'll have some sort of carbon dioxide cleansing device in a submersible. That system wouldn't function if the batteries ran out. Due to the chilly temperatures at the ocean's depths, hypothermia is also a possibility. Panic episodes can also cause hyperventilation, which can deplete additional oxygen. The CEO of Titanic tourist business Ocean Gate Expeditions, Rush, was sued by a Florida couple who claimed he misled them about their trip to the ruin and wouldn't give them their $210,258 back when they complained. Mark and Sharon Hagel are well recognized for their charity and adventurous attitude. They acquired their money in commercial real estate. They made history by being the first married pair to travel to space in March 2022 while on the fourth Blue Origin passenger space trip. On a journey to the South Pole in 2016, they made the decision that their next adventure would be underwater. They were among the initial clients for Ocean Gate, which was started in 2009 by aviator and entrepreneur Stockton Rush, who is now 61 and was born in Seattle. However, they were never able to go on their vacation. As a result, they sued Rush in February of this year, accusing him of marketing the excursion while knowing it would be delayed and refusing to give them their money back.